nataka kunifuata lazima wale mwili wangu na wakunywe pia damu yangu Jesus said Yesu akasema Those who want to follow me must eat my flesh and drink my blood Wale wanaotaka kunifuata lazima wale mwili wangu na wakunywe pia damu yangu Jesus said Yesu akasema Those who want to follow me must eat my flesh and drink my blood Wale wanaotaka kunifuata lazima wale mwili wangu na wakunywe pia damu yangu Jesus said Yesu akasema Those who want to follow me must eat my flesh and drink my blood Wale wanaotaka kunifuata lazima wale mwili sweet hour of pray, prayer sweet hour of prayer so i welcome you all that we may pray together nilisema ya kwamba sitawahi tamani kuambia mtu ya kwamba ninaomba you are watching i don't want you to watch i want you to pray together with us praise the lord so welcome i'm your host pastor mary nyokonyo in our studios at nyokonyo studios we have our fellow pastors who are going to lead us to the sermon of this evening. I believe that we have brethren who have fasted from morning. They were in prayers from morning, just praying for you and for me. Tuko na wala ambao walituma pia maombi yao, maitaji, prayer requests. Waliweza kutuma ya kwamba tukaweze kuomba pamoja. Na ninafurahia sana kwa wala ambao pia wanatoa ushuhuda wakisema Mungu amejibu. That is a one step and we are waiting for another step because our God keeps us lifting us from one glory to the other. So I thank God because of you wherever you are. We pray together. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Karibuni karibuni ili tukaweze kuwa na ibada hii maalum kwa ajili ya maombi tumekuwa tukiomba kuanzia asubuhi na wengine najua kwamba bado wangali katika mafungo na maombi wanatarajia kufungua jioni wengine watafululisa wakiendelea Mungu awabariki sana wala ambao wanasimama kwa pengo kwa ajili ya wenzao Nilikuwa nafikiria wakati ambapo nilikuwa katika maombi yangu ya mchana ya kwamba unapata kanisa haliendelei haliendi mbali Tumi, watumishi wa Mungu tunashindwa ya kwamba ni kwa nini nikapata ya kwamba sisi wakati mwingine kama wachungaji hatuachili baraka za Mungu kwa wapendwa watu wanaenda wakiwa ya kwamba hawabarikiwi kwa hivyo mtu anakaa mwezi mmoja wa pili asipoona baraka anapata kuondoka na kanisa linabaki badala ya kuinuka linabaki likididimia Ndiyo maana tumechukua fursa hii ya kwamba tutabiri baraka za Mungu juu ya maisha yako na wewe uishi kubarikiwa. Hatuna wivu wakati mtu anabarikiwa. Tunafurahia wakati tunapata ushuhuda wa mtu mmoja wawili ya kwamba kazi yangu imeanza kuinuka. That is our joy. Praise the Lord. Tunafurahi kuona ya kwamba kasi hii ama maombi haya tunayoyafanya mahali hapa yanakuwa ya baraka kwako. Kwa hivyo usikose usiondoke usibanduke hapo mahali ambapo umeketi wacha tukaingie katika maombi haya tunaanza na maubiri kisha baadaye tumishi wa Mungu atapeleka katika ile nafasi ya kuomba na najua kwamba pia wewe utakuwa unaombea mahitaji yako sio yeye tu atakuwa na kuombea bali hata wewe utakuwa unayataja baadhi ya mahitaji yako mbele za Mungu popote ulipo. Kwa hivyo kwa wiki kama mbili ama tatu hatuja kuwa hewani kwa sababu ambazo hatungeweza kuziepuka na nashukuru Mungu ya kwamba watu wamekuwa wakifuatilia kutaka kujua mbona hamkuji maana maubiri haya yamekuwa ya baraka sana kwao na kukaribisha karibu popote ulipo kuwa msikifu haswa katika neno la Mungu. Maana wakati ambapo mtumishi wa Mungu alikuwa anaongelea kuhusu madhabau, niliona watu wengi sana wakiwa wana pata kushukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya kufunguliwa macho wamepata kujua mambo ambayo hawakuwa wanajua kwa sababu ya madhabau na leo hii ama wiki ambayo tulikuwa hapa ya mwisho na kumbuka ni kama wiki moja imepita kama hatuja kuwa hewani wiki ambayo tulikuwa hapa ya mwisho na pia hatukumalizia 
mtumishi wa Mungu alikuwa anaongelea about the lukewarm church. The servant of God was speaking about the lukewarm church and I believe that he has put it also in different segments so that we will walk from one segment to another for you to understand more about the lukewarm church. Na kama uko katikati ya hiyo lukewarm church you better move. Utoke hapo. Uingie katika ile kanisa ambalo liko hot na taa yako isije ikazima. Bali uwe unawaka na uwe moto kila siku. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Karibu sana ninapokaribisha zai welcome the servants of God. I believe that you will stay tuned till the end. And I also want to thank God because of your bundles, because of your finances, because of your money. Sitakosa kushukuru Mungu. Maana najua kwamba we kuketi chini, kusikiza maubiri haya ili akawe ya baraka katika visazi vyako. Sio jambo la kuchukulia hivi hivi. Kwa hivyo Mungu akubariki kama hauja load simu yako, load your phone so that we may walk together in this journey of approaching the throne of God, the throne of mercy, for God to have mercy unto us. God bless you. Welcome servants of God. We are ready to go. You will tell us your names. Perhaps it's our viewers first time to be to watch us or to pray with us. Welcome and tell us your name as we continue with the word of God. God bless you. Welcome. I want to take this opportunity mm -hmm. to appreciate the Almighty God. For giving us this opportunity again of sharing the word of God. My name is Harrison Adea. Majina yangu ni Harrison Adea. My interpreter is called uh, Nicoshel Baraza. Uh, mkilimani wangu anaitwa Nicoshel Baraza. And we are so glad to be here in the studio. Na tumefurahikia kuwa hapa katika vituo hivi. Last time we were sharing and talking about the lukewarm church. Uh, wakati ulo pita tukiwa hapa tuliko tunashiriki kuhusu kanisa lililo fugu fugu. And so unfortunately the electricity didn't allow us to continue. Na kisha badai uh, moto haukuturuhusu kuendelea. There was a blackout everywhere. Uh, tulikosa umeme kila mahala but we do apologize for that na tunaomba radi kwa hiyo there was nothing we could have done to save the situation hapana uh, kile ambacho tungefanya kuokoa hali but we want to begin uh, where we left from nataka kuanzia kule tulikoachia but let's pray Tuombe. Father in the name of Jesus Baba kwa jina la Yesu The name that is above every name Jina lililo zaidi ya kila jina Lord we humble in your presence today Bwana twajinyenyekesha uweponi pako leo As we seek you Lord to give us the guidance of the Holy Spirit Napokutafuta Bwana utupe mwongozo wa Roho Mtakatifu As we share this word with your precious people Tunaposhiriki neno hili na watu wako wa damana Lord I pray that you will establish this word in our hearts. Bwana ninaomba kwamba utalihifadhi neno hili katika mioyo zetu. I want to thank you for your glory and visitation. Nataka kushukuru kwa sababu ya utukufu wako na mtembeo wako. Speak to somebody O oh Lord. Nena na mtu e Bwana that his life shall never remain the same again. Ili maisha yake isije salia sawia tena. Allow your anointing of the Holy Spirit. Usu upako wa Roho Mtakatifu. To break every yoke and every powers of the enemy kuvuncha kila nira na kila nguvu za adui that your will may prevail ili kutaka kwako kuweze kutawala in jesus mighty name we pray kwa jina la yesu lokuto aomba amen amina uh, the church uh, that we are tackling today is the church of laodicea Kanisa tunalolisungumzia leo ni kanisa la Laodikia where the uh, the Lord uh, God revealed to John the apostle ambako Bwana alifunua kwa Yohana ambaye ni mtume Remember John the apostle was given this revelation to seven churches so that the Lord was speaking about their condition Kumbuka Yohana ambaye ni mtume alipewa ufunuo huu kwa makanisa saba ambayo tunazungumzia. John was a man who went through a lot of isolation by being thrown uh, even in a, in hot oil so that he can die. 
Uh, Yohana ni mtu yule aliyepitia katika kutengwa kwingi hadi akatupo kwenye mafuta yenye moto akaweze kufa. While at Patmo, katika mji wa Patmos, when they had isolated him there, walipokuwa wamemtenga pale, waiting for him to die, wakimngoja afe, that is when Jehovah gave him the revelation about the status of the churches. Hapo ndipo Jehovah alimpatia ufunuo kuhusu makanisa. And he revealed to him the mysteries that was hidden in the church. Na kutoa ufunuo kwake kuhusu siri zilizokuwa zimefichika katika kanisa. And again he allowed him to write down these things so that the people can read and get to know. Na pia akamruhusu akaweze kuna kili mambo haya chini ili watu wakaweze kusoma na kufahamu. And so the church that we are dealing with today Na hivyo kanisa tunaloshughulikia leo is the church of Laodicea. Ni kanisa la Laodicea. The church of Laodicea. Kanisa la Laodicea is a church that John wrote concerning it. Ni kanisa ambalo Yohana alina kili kulihusu. And how God revealed the the condition of that church to him na jinsi mungu aliweza kuweka wazi hali ya kanisa hilo kwake and so verse 14 he says na hivyo mstari wa 14 anasema to the angel of the church of laodicea right kwa malaika wa kanisa la lodokia these are the words of the amen na haya ni maneno ya amina. The, 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 the word amen there talks about the true the true God of Israel. A, neno amina pale la Mungu wa kweli wa Israeli. The faithful and true witness, a ruler of God's creation. Aliye mwaminifu na shahidi wa kweli, ta, uh, uh, mtawala wa taifa. I know you are deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. Najua matendo yenu wewe si moto wala baridi. I wish you were either one or the other. Ah, ningelitamani uwe moto ama uwe tu baridi. So because you are a lukewarm, na kwa sababu wewe ni fugufu, neither hot nor cold I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Si baridi si moto karibu na kutema katika kinywa changu. You say I am rich i have acquired wealth and do not need a thing unasema mimi ni tajiri nimepata mali na sihitaji chochote but you says i counsel you to buy from uh, gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich uh, anasema ninakuzuia ili ukaweze kupata dhahabu ili uweze kutajirika i counsel you to buy uh, nina nina ku Ninakukashifu leo. Nakupa shauri. Na, nakupa shauri leo. I counsel you to buy from me. Na 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 nakupa shauri leo ununue kwa ajili yangu. Gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich. Ah uh, 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 dabeu iliyopitishwa kwenye moto ili ufanyike tajiri. And white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness. Na mavasi meupe ya kuvalia ili ufunike uchi wako. And so uh, self to put on your eyes so that you can see na uweze kutisama macho yako ukapate kuona those whom i love i rebuke and discipline na wale ninaowapenda na wakemea na kuadibu so be honest and repent kwa hivyo geuka na ukatubu this was the condition of this church basi hii ni kuando hali ya kanisa hili the church of laodicea kanisa la laodokia they began living as the people that did not understand their position in christ walianza ku kuishi sawia na watu waliokuwa hawafahamu nafasi zao katika Kristo Yesu According to the conversation of John here Kulingana na mawasiliano ya Yohana hapa They live like they don't need anything Waliishi sawia na watu wasiohitaji lolote As if they have everything and they don't need anything Kana kwamba wako na vyote na hawahitaji lolote But according to the observation of Jehovah Almighty Na kulingana na mtasamu 
He saw their weakness. And he saw how poor these people were although they saw themselves as rich. In the book, in the book of Deuteronomy last time I said Deuteronomy chapter number 8 and verse 11 he says, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Failing to observe his commands. His laws and his decrees that I am giving you this day. But verse 10 he says. Of Deuteronomy chapter number 8. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. These people had forgotten the Lord God who had given them the wealth. A lot of people normally think when you go to church and you become so successful you don't need God. And they go to church and pray so hard after God has answered their prayer then they relax in faith. They forget about where they came from and what God has done in their life. That is why Moses is telling them, be careful, don't forget. How could the church of Laodicea forget this? And they feel like uh, they have acquired the rich richness and they have uh, they have everything they need in life na wangehisi kwamba wameweza pokea utajiri wote na vyote wanavyohitaji katika maisha so they say we do not need anything else hivyo wanasema hatuhitaji lolote tena they are now in a comfort zone sasa wako katika eneo la starehe where they live according to their riches not according to the will of god ambako wanaishi kulingana na utajiri wao lakini si kulingana na mapenzi ya they live according to their money but not according to the faith. They live according to the wealth they have been given by God and not according to the grace that God has supplied. Their faith is no longer in God now. It's now into the riches and the things they possess. That is the condition of the church right now. Like the church of Laodicea. People think when I have money, I don't need God. When I acquire everything of this world, then I can do whatever I feel I need to do. But they forget to know that the world and everything in it belongs to God. If God wants to take it away, he can take it. So the church of Laodicea, they have this 
three things that God is speaking about. Wako na hivi vitu vitatu ambazo Bwana anavisungumzia. They had lost their vigor. Basi walikuwa wamepoteza udamana wao. Their strength, their vigor. Nguvu zao. They had lost their strength in the Lord. Walikuwa wamepoteza nguvu zao katika Bwana. They lost their values as the children of God. Walipoteza udamana kama wana wa Mungu. And now God is telling them na sasa bana nawaambia you say you are rich mnasema ninyi ni tajiri you have acquired wealth mumepokea mali and you do not need anything na hamuhitaji chochote the city of laodicea mji wa laodicea was a place of business palikuwa ni mahala pa biashara they did so many business and a lot of investors were there walifanya biashara zilizokuwa nyingi na wale waekezaji wengi wale kwa pale and these guys had so so much in their bank accounts na watu hao walikuwa na vitu vingi katika benki zao it was a place where the the, the, the factories were established ni mahala ambako viwanda zilikuwa zimeegezwa it was also a place where there was specialist of eyes na pia palikuwa na mahala ambako kulikuwa na wale wenye taaluma ya kuchunguza macho and they, they had that specialism of treating eyes na hii taaluma ya kutibu macho ilikuwa pamoja na wao and that is why ndio sababu God is revealing to John this. Yohana anafunuliwa haya na Mungu. They say we do not need anything. Wanasema hatuhitaji chochote. But God is saying you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful and poor. Na Bwana anasema kwamba hamjapata kujua kwamba mmeinuliwa mkiwa maskini. You are wretched, pitiful and poor. Munaishi katika hali ya aibu. Aha. Uh-huh. And now he's telling them Na sasa anawaambia that you need to realize that when you think you are something then you are nothing. Kwamba mnahitaji kufahamu mkiwa mkidania ninyi mna kitu mpaswe kujua kwamba hamna lolote. They think they have everything when they have lost it. Wanadania wako na kila kitu wakati wamekipoteza. And so he's telling them see you are poor. Anawaambia tisama ninyi ni maskini because your investment is all about the worldly thing not the things of the kingdom. Maana uwekezaji wenu ni kwa vile vitu vya duniani na sio sio zile vitu za mbinguni. And he says again you are blind. Na pia tena nasema tisama pia ninyi ni vipofu and you are naked. Na muko uchi so he's telling them na anawambia, that you need to do one thing kwamba mwapaswa kufanya kitu kimoja to come and buy i counsel you to buy from me gold refined Anas, anasema na washauri mkaweze kununua da da dhahabu iliyopitishwa kwenye moto why is god telling them to buy from him the gold that is refined kwa nini mungu anawashauri wakaweze kununua dhahabu iliyopitishwa kwenye moto he is telling them about paying the price anajaribu kuwanenea kuhusu ulipishaji gharama paying the price kulipia gharama he is removing them from the comfort zone and telling them that i am now uh, telling you to understand that there will be persecution anajaribu kuwatoa katika mawazo ya starehe wakaweze kujua kwamba patakuwa na wakati wa mateso and that is why when you read first peter 1:7 na ndio sababu unaposoma kitabu cha petero wa kwanza waraka wa kwanza wa petero mlango wa kwanza mstari wa saba nothing makes god's people examine their priorities faster than suffering Hapana chochote kinachoweza kuwafanya watu wa Mungu kujiona kwamba uh, wanapitia hali ngumu kando na mateso. The examining of their life and their priority will just come faster when there is a condition or, or situation they are going through. Na kujihoji kwa maisha yao na vitu wanavyoviweka katika utangulisi vitakuja tu wakati wanapitia ama wakati wanaona maisha yao yapo katika magumu. And God allows them to undergo through that suffering so that they can come back to their uh, them, themselves. Na Mungu anawaruhusu wakaweze kupitia uh, yale mateso ili wakaweze jirejele 
prayer so that he can refine the church and bring it to the holiness and righteousness of God ili akaweze kuifanya upya kanisa na kuirejesha katika haki na utakatifu wa Bwana the bible says let the word of god dwell in you so richly biblia inasema kwamba na neno hili likakae ndani yenu katika utele the church of laodicea they were rich in money but poor in the spirit kanisa la laodicea lilikuwa tajiri kifedha lakini amaskini katika imani they were rich with vehicles rich with businesses rich with bank account but they were very poor in the spirit the word of god was nowhere to be traced in their hearts walikuwa tajiri katika magari walikuwa tajiri katika benki walikuwa tajiri katika biashara lakini walikuwa maskini katika neno la Mungu neno la Mungu ama katika masuala ya kiroho hawakuwa na lolote katika benki zao their priority was not the kingdom but they based their priority on the human and the worldly priorities walichokiweka katika utangulisi sio ufalme wa Mungu ilikuwa ni dunia na vitu vilivyomo katika dunia that is why so many church Churches today they are based so much on the gospel of prosperity and they are telling people so much things about money and vehicle and good life na ndo sababu leo makanisa mengi yameegeza imani yao katika ufanisi mahubiri yao katika ufanisi na wanawaambia watu zaidi kuhusu utajiri pesa na pia magari na maisha yaliyo mazuri they don't build the heart of people to have the word of god which is more than the wealth of this world more than money more than the, the gold that they are being talked about na hawajenki mioza watu wa mungu wakaweze ku na hili neno la Mungu ndani yao wanaegeza uh, watu hawa kuwa na umiliki wa vitu wa hapa duniani the world and everything in it will pass away but the word of god will remain dunia na vyote vilivyomo vitapita lakini neno la Mungu litadumu katika umilele what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul basi itamfaidi nini mtu kupata vyote vya dunia na kupoteza uh, na kupoteza uf- Laodicea Kanisa la Laodicea They are only focus on material things Wameweka mtasamo tu katika vitu vya kidunia They are seeking material things Wanatafuta vitu vionekanavyo kwa macho And for sure they were so rich uh, materially Na kwa kweli walikuwa na rasilimali zilizo mingi But they were very poor in the spirit Na walikuwa maskini katika roho And again he says Na tena nasema you have you are blind pia ninyi ni vipofu they had lost their vision walikuwa wamepoteza mtasamo wao they were blind walikuwa wamepofushwa the laodicea church were blind they could not see reality kanisa la lokia lilikuwa na upofu hawangeweza kuona ukweli they didn't see the reality hawakuona kweli the reality that god wanted them to see kweli ambayo bwana alitaka waweze kuona that is why jesus said when a blind man leads a blind a person they all fall in ditch na ndio sababu Yesu akasema kwamba kipofu anapomuelekeza kipofu mwenzake wote wataingia katika uh, shimo they didn't see the reality of their condition hawakuona kweli ya hali zao apostle peter teaches that when a believer is not growing in the lord mtume paulo anafundisha akisema kwamba wakati muumini hakui katika uh, bwana Apostle Peter uh, mtume Petero teaches that when a believer is not growing in the Lord anafundisha kwamba wakati muumini hakui katika Bwana his spiritual vision is affected basi maono yake ya kiroho yanaweza kuathirika and that is in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse, verse 5 to 9 na hiyo ni waraka wa Petero wa kwanza mlango wa kwanza msari wa tisa. but let me read uh, 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 verse 9 Wacha nisome wa haraka wa pili wa Petero mlango wa kwanza mstari wa tisa. But if any man does not have them uh, wakati mtu yote anakosa kuwa navyo having what 
Kukua na nini? Verse 5 he says for this very reason make every effort to add to your faith go, uh, goodness. Ah uh, anasema kwa sababu hii fanya bidii kuongeza uwema katika imani yako. And to goodness knowledge. Na kwa uwema pia ufahamu. And to knowledge self control. Na katika ufahamu ukue na ule ukiasi. And to self control perseverance. Na katika ukiasi uvumilifu. And to perseverance godliness. Na katika uvumilifu basi uungu. And to godliness brotherly kindness. Na katika uungu basi upole wa kiundugu. And to brother brotherly uh, brotherly kindness love. Na katika upole wa kiundugu basi upendo. So if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, na ukiwa na haya katika uongeze, katika kuongezeka kwako, they will keep you from being infective and uh, unproductive in your knowledge yatakutunza na kukusaidia katika ukuaji wa ufahamu wako of our lord jesus christ katika bwana wetu yeso christo but if anyone does not have them na kama mtu basi hatakuwa na kanuni hizi he is short sighted and blind basi yeye atakuwa na atakuwa mtu wa kuona kwa ukaribu na kipofu and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins na amesahau kuwa amekwisha takazika kutoka katika dambi zake za awali the church of laodicea did not have these qualities basi kanisa la laodicea halikuweza kuwa na kanuni hizi they did not have the goodness hawakuwa na wema the knowledge basi ufahamu self control ukiasi perseverance uvumilifu god Godliness, uungu, brotherly kindness upole wa kindugu, and love na upendo they lacked those qualities that is why they were blind walikosa hizi kanuni na ndio sababu wakawa vipofu they were not growing in the lord hawakuwa wakuachi katika bwana and these people could not see themselves as they uh, they uh, really were na watu hawa hawengi jiona wenyewe jinsi walipaswa kuwa they were not even able to see that the lord jesus is standing on the door knocking so that they can open open for him and have fellowship with him wakuweza kujua kwamba bwana yesu anabisha mlangoni na wakaweze kufungua ili akaweze kushiriki pamoja na wao nor could they see the open doors of opportunities na wala hawakuona milango za tunuku they never saw that hawakuweza kuona hiyo they were blind walikuwa vipofu paul is writing to the church of corinthians telling them the god of this world God has blinded the mind of unbelievers. Ah Paul anaandika kwa Wakorinto kwamba Mungu wa dunia hii ameweza kupofusha uh, waumini. So when these people were blinded with the riches and wealth and everything they were possessing. Na watu hao walipopofushwa na mali na utajiri walokuwa wanamiliki they removed their eyes from god and then they started focusing on worldly things waliondoa mtasamo wao kutoka kwa mungu na wakaanza kuvitasamia vitu vya kidunia the church has removed their eyes from jesus the author and the finisher of their faith and now they are focused on the things of the world and the riches of the world kanisa limeondoa macho yao katika kristo ambaye ni mwanzilishi wa ima mani na wameegeza macho yao katika utajiri na vitu na mali ya dunia hii That is why the Bible says fix your eyes to Jesus the author and the finish of your faith Na ndio sababu Biblia inasema kwamba yaegeze macho yako a, katika Yesu Kristo ambaye ni mtangulizi mwanzilishi wa imani yako The riches and the glory of this world has blinded the mind and the eyes of so many believers Basi utajiri na vitu vya dunia hii vimeweza kupofusha imani ya waumini wengi katika dunia Let me tell you something Nikwambie kitu A lot of people think when they have a lot of money 
money they are going to live better life. Basi watu wengi hudania wanapokuwa na pesa zilizo nyingi wataishi maisha yaliyo mazuri. We have people with money and they are not enjoying money. Basi pana watu waliona pesa zilizo nyingi na hawajafurahikia maisha. I've seen so many people committing suicide because they have a lot of money but they don't have peace. Nimeona watu walo wengi waliona pesa nyingi waki waki wakijitia tanzu wakiji nyonga kwa sababu wako na pesa na hawana amani The city of Laodicea mji wa Laodicea was known to, uh, to 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 their position of treating the eyes but they were blind Walikuwa na ujuzi wa kutibu macho na walifahamika sana lakini walikuwa vipofu they wow. had lost their sight from God from focusing on God and they started focusing on worldly things Walipoteza macho yao kwa kuti sama Mungu wakaanza kuvitisama vitu vya hapa duniani. And so many believers are blinded. Na leo waumini wengi ni vipofu. I pray that your spiritual eyes may be enlightened. Naomba kwamba macho yako ya kiroho yakaweze kutiwa nuru. When Paul went to the church of Ephesians, wakati Paulo analitembelea kanisa la Waefeso, he made a very powerful prayer to these people. Akaomba maombi yenye nguvu mno kwa watu and he prayed to these people Nakaomba kwa watu hawa that they may receive their spiritual enlightenment ili wakaweze kupokea uh, mwangaza wao wa kiroho Ephesians 1:18 wa Efeso mlango wa kwanza mstari wa 18 say i pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order Anasema pia ninaomba kwamba macho yenu ya kiroho yakaweze kupata mwanga katika mpangilio in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you ili mkaweze kupata tumaini alilowaitia kwalo the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints Utaji, katika utajiri wa uridi wake katika waumini and his incomparably great power for us who believe na nguvu zake zilizo kuu kwa kwetu sisi tunaoamini that power is like the working of his mighty strength basi nguvu hizo ni sawia na utendaji kazi wake so paul is saying i pray that your eyes your spiritual eyes may be enlightened paulo anasema ninaomba kwamba macho yenu ya kiroho yakaweze kupata nuru the church of laodicea was blinded kanisa la laodikia lilikuwa imepofushwa that is how the church in Kenya and the church everywhere the world is blinded na hivyo ndivyo kanisa la Kenya leo na makanisa mengine zaidi duniani yamepofushwa because people are thinking about gaining and having everything of the world when they don't care about having relationship with god maana watu wanajali kuvipata vyote vya dunia wakati wanakosa kujali kupata vya kimbingu again he says i see you are naked na tena nasema ninawaona mkiwa vipofu they had lost their vesture walikuwa wamepoteza udamana wao the garment the vesture basi walikuwa wamepoteza vasi lao they thought they were clothed in splendor walikuwa na imani kwamba wame mavasi yalikuwa tu ni ya ubure they had clothed with splendor utukufu basi walikuwa nadhani kwamba mavasi yale ni ya utukufu when they were really naked wakiwa kabisa wako uchi so uh, jehovah is telling them i can see you are blind and naked jehovah anawaambia ninaweza kuona mkiwa vipofu na wenye uchi wao uko wazi and a lot of people in church they are naked na watu wengi leo kanisani wako uchi they lost the garment of righteousness and the garment of holiness and they have acquired another garment of the world putting on the garment they feel that that garment and the so splendor walipoteza vasi la uhaki na utakatifu wakavalia vasi lingine la dunia ambalo wanadania kwamba vasi hilo ni la utukufu when adam and eve had lost the glory of jehovah they went outside there and looked for a garment so that they can put on to hide their nakedness basi adamu na eve walipopoteza utukufu wa jehovah wali 
wakaenda pale nje wakatafuta vasi lingine ambalo waliweza kuvalia ili wakaweze kufunika uchi wao but that garment never covered their nakedness because Jehovah realized that nalo lile vasi walilovalia halikuweza funika uchi wao maana Mungu mwenyewe Jehovah alipowafikia alitambua kwamba watu hao wako uchi they clothed in splendor when they were really naked walivalia katika utukufu wakati kweli kabisa walikuwa uchi so Jehovah realized this and then he re- he, he decided to, to slaughter the beast and cover their nakedness with the skin Ah basi bwana alitambua hii alipoona uchi wao na akafanya kuchinja wanyama ili akawafunike na na, na, na ngozi ya mnyama. Why is he telling them about their nakedness? Ah, basi kwa nini Mungu anawaambia hawa wapendwa kuhusu uchi wao? When they have good clothes and good uh, dresses in their houses. Wakati wako na mavasi na nguo nzuri katika vyumba vyao. He's telling them you need to have the garment of righteousness they didn't have righteousness anawaambia kwamba mwahitaji kuwa na vasi la uhaki hawakuwa na uhaki wa Mungu let me explain something to you today wacha nilete katika maelezo kwako jambo leo to be naked meant to be defeated and humiliated in the bible ah basi kwa huchi kulimaanisha kushindwa na kunyanyazwa katika bibi Yeah. To be naked in the Bible meant to be defeated. You are living a defeated life. Basi kwa uchi katika Biblia ilikuwa inamaanisha kwamba unaishi katika kushindwa, unafanya chochote lakini unashindwa. And it it was a symbol of humiliation or shame. Basi ilikuwa ni ishara ya ku, ya, ku, ya, ku, ya aibu. And so we realize this from the book of 2 Samuel chapter 10 verse 4. Basi tu natambua haya katika Samueli wa pili mlango wa sa, mlango wa kumi msari wa 4 where uh, david when david realized that nahash had died wakati daudi anakuja kutambua na kufahamu kwamba nahash ameweza kufa and his son hanam Hanan took over from him. Naye mwana wake Hanan akachukua utawala kutoka kwake. As a custom he took uh, the, 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 the man that was together with him. Ah kama desturi alichukua wanaume ma watu waliokuwa pamoja na wao. And send them to go so that they can also present a speech of condolence to the family. Na kuwatuma waende watoe jumbe na rambe rambi za pole kwa jamii na hash had been an enemy of to israel basi na hash alikuwa ni adui katika israeli yet had showed kindness to david naye alikuwa ameonyesha upole unyenyekevu tifu kwa daudi so when he died naye alipokufa david sent a letter of condolence to him to, to, to his son who had taken over from him naye daudi akatuma pole zake na rambi rambi zake kwa mwanawe aliyekuwa amechukua uongozi toka kwake but hanan while seated in his palace naye hanan akiwa ameketi katika ikulu yake the adviser of him saw the men of david coming with the letter of condolence to him washauri wake wakaona watu kutoka katika eneo la daudi wakija na zile barua za pole kwake and they said these guys are not coming to condole with you but they have come to spy our land na wakaweza kumwambia kwamba watu hao wanaokuja hawaja kuja kuleta pole zao lakini wamekuja kuchunguza ichi yetu so they said to him let us humiliate them beat them and shave their beards ha? and and, and torn their garments na wakasema kwake kwamba wacha tuwatese wacha tuwapige tukaweze kurarua mavasi yao ili wakaweze ku and to shave their beards na wakaweze pia kunyoa ndevu zao remember the jewish people the jewish men were not allowed to shave their beards because it was an act of shame ma ukumbuke kwamba wale wa yahudi hawakuwa na ruhusiwa kunyoa ndevu zao maana ilikuwa ni kitendo cha aibu why am i bringing this to you 
Kwa nini naleta haya kwako? Because I want you to know the nakedness that God was speaking to the church of Laodicea. Maana nataka uweze kujua aina ya uchi aliyokuwa anasema Bwana kwa kanisa la Laodicea. And so when these people are humiliated they went back and brought the message to King David Man ona watu hawa walipoweza kuteswa walirejesha ujumbe kwa mfalme Daudi And they were not allowed to get into the camp but they were placed somewhere until their, their beards were grow uh, the, 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 the beards could grow again Na ukumbuke hawakuruhusiwa kuingia kwenye hema wangeliwekwa mahali kwanza ili ndevu zao zikaweze tena kukua They turn their and shaved their beard to humiliate them so that they can be naked. Ah waliweza kunyoa ndevu zao na kurarua mavazi yao ili wakawateshe. What does that mean? Basi yamaanisha nini hiyo? The Lord had seen the nakedness of the church of Laodicea. Bana alikuwa amekwisha ona uchi wa kanisa la Laodicea. Yes, they have clothed themselves with this, uh, the garment of splendor, but they were naked in the eyes of God. Ndio wamevalia wenyewe mavasi yao katika utukufu lakini walikuwa uchi mbele za Bwana. Again in Isaiah chapter 20 verse 1 to 4. Na pia tena katika Isaya mlango wa 20 mstari wa 4. The Lord is telling Isaiah. Bwana anamwambia Isaya to remove his cloth and his sandal aondoe mavasi yake na basi uh, vyatu vyake and then walk naked for three years na atembee uchi kwa miaka mitatu and that was to tell these people basi na hiyo ilikuwa ni kuambieni watu hawa that the syria will come and take out them away kwamba syria itakuja na kuwaondoa uh, kuwaondoa maeneo yale and they are going to be humiliated as my son servant has walked naked around for three years na wanaenda kuteswa kama vile mtumishi wake ametembea uchi kwa miaka mitatu what god is telling the church of laodicea kile bwana anajaribu kunena na kanisa la laodicea they thought they were glorifying god walikuwa na wazo kuwa wanamtukuza mungu when in reality they were disgracing his name na katika ukweli walikuwa na aibisha jina lake they were walking around naked disgracing the name of the lord walikuwa natembea wakiwa uchi wakiliaibisha The church has disgraced Jesus. Nalo kanisa limeliaibisha jina la Yesu. The servants of God has disgraced the blood of Jesus. Watumishi wa Mungu wameaibisha damu ya Yesu Kristo. The so-called prophets of God has disgraced the, the name of Jesus. Wale wanaoitwa manabii leo wameaibisha jina la Yesu. The so-called apostles have disgraced the name of the Lord. Wanaoitwa mitume leo wameweza kuwa bisha uh, jina la Yesu because they lost their vesture maana walipoteza vasi lao and they are walking naked na wanatembea wakiwa uchi you can see their nakedness in talking Wana, unaweza kuona uchi wao katika kushungumza because they are looking for their own glory maana wanajitafutia utukufu wao wenyewe pursuing their own agenda not God's agenda wakiendeleza uh, mipango za wenyewe sio mipango za Mungu disgracing the name of Jesus everywhere wakiliaibisha jina la Yesu kila mahala there is no divine commendation given to this church hapana uungu wowote ambao umeweza kupeanwa kwa kanisa hili there was no divine commendation they were never recommended basi watu hawa hawakuweza kupewa habari yoyote ya kiungu why kwa nini because the laodicea church were busy recommended mending themselves maana kanisa la Laodikia lilikuwa katika biashara ya kujitambua wenyewe they were recommending themselves walikuwa wanajitambua wenyewe so they didn't care anything basi hawakujali lolote because they are naked maana wako uchi when you are naked everybody will see your nakedness basi ukiwa uchi kila mtu at-
Ataona uchi wako. And we can see how the churches are naked. Na tunaweza kuona vile makanisa leo yako uchi. We can look through the spiritual eyes and detect that there is a problem with this church. Tunaweza kuangalia kwa macho ya kiroho na kutangaza kwamba pana shida kwa kanisa hili. Because they lost the garment that could protect and cover their nakedness and that is the righteousness of Jehovah. Maana walipoteza vasi ambalo lingefunika uhaki wao maana walipoteza haki ya Mungu. The white clothes to wear. Mavasi meupe ya kuvalia. So that you can cover your shameful nakedness. Ili mkaweze kufunika uchi wenu wa aibu. They lost that. Walipoteza hiyo. They needed the white garment of God's righteousness. Walihitaji vasi leupe la uhaki wa Mungu. According to Revelation 19:8 Kulingana na ufunuo 19:8 The fine linen garment symbolizes the righteousness act of saints. Basi vasi jeupe lilikuwa lina lina linaweza lina kudhihirisha tendo la imani. The righteousness act of faith. Au haki wa tendo la imani. But they had lost this. Na walikuwa wamepoteza hiyo. Now listen to this. Na sasa sikiza hii. The Lord closed this letter with three special statements. Bwana aliweza ku visha barua hii na taarifa zilizo tatu his, his closing remarks aliweza kufunga kwa maneno haya number one, ya kwanza an explanation katika maelezo in chapter 3 verse 19a of revelation katika mlango wa, wa uh, katika msari wa tatu wa mlango wa 19 sehemu ya kwanza ya ufunuo he gives an explanation there anapeana Uh, and he says this Those whom I love I rebuke and discipline Wale ni wapendao mimi huwakemea na kuadhibu That is to tell the church of Laodicea Hiyo ni kulieleza kanisa la Laodicea And the Lord will also come through his love kwamba Bwana pia atakuja kwa upendo wake And discipline those whom he love Na kuadhibu wale anao wapenda The discipline of God does not mean he hates you ah, basi ni damu ya Mungu haimaanisha na kuchukia but it's a way of correcting his people so that they can turn away from their wickedness na pia ni mbinu ya kuwa kuadhibu watu wake wakaweze kugeuka katika uofu another closing remark the second closing remark is an exhortation ya pili ni kule kujinua and he exhortation exhortation he says be zealous therefore and repent verse 19b of revelation 3 a sehemu ya pili ya ufunuo mlango wa 19 mstari wa tatu. so be honest and repent basi mkaweze kugeuka na kutubu and the third uh, the third uh, statement that is as a closing statement to this church na ya tatu ambayo ni taarifa ya kumalizia katika kanisa hili he finishes by an invitation anamalizia kwa kwa kwa, kwa kuweza kuwakaribisha mwaliko katika ule mwaliko an invitation in revelation chapter 3 verse 20 to 22 ya, katika ufunuo mlango wa 3 mstari wa 20 hadi 22 the lord was outside the laodicea church bwana alikuwa nje ya kanisa la laodicea he was not inside hakuwa ndani that is to tell you there is a lot of churches but jesus is outside hiyo ni kukujulisha kwamba kuna makanisa mengi lakini Yesu yuko nje. The Lord is not involved in what they are doing because he's outside them. Bwana hajihusisha kwa kile wanakifanya maana yuko nje. They lost fellowship long time ago with Jesus. Walipoteza ushirika na Yesu miaka za kitambo sana. But he's still giving them invitation. Lakini bado anawalika. And when you read that article na unaposoma kipengee hicho he says here i am i stand at the door and knock 
Anasema tazama nasimama mlangoni na bisha. If anyone hears my voice na mtu akisikia sauti yangu an invitation here a mwaliko hapa he spoke to the individuals alizungumza kwa watu binafsi not everybody but he speaking to an individual sio kila mtu anazungumza na mtu binafsi if any man kama mtu yeyote and not to the whole congregation sio kwa umati wote if anyone will hear the voice and accept him in na kama yeyote atasikia sauti yake na kumkubalia aingie so it doesn't matter all the people have rejected jesus basi haijalishi watu wote wamemkana yesu but one person can make a change lakini mtu mmoja anaweza lete tofauti the lukewarm church kanisa fugufugu the church that has lost fellowship kanisa malo limepoteza ushirika they have lost the righteousness of god wamepoteza uhaki wa mungu they have covered themselves with the clothes of splendor but they are wicked wamejifunika wenyewe na mavasi ya utukufu lakini wako uchi and god has exposed their nakedness outside naye bwana ameweka wazi uchi wao pale nje no more hiding hapana kufichwa tena everything has been revealed maana kila kitu kimewekwa wazi they think they are very rich and very very rich when they are poor wanadani wao ni tajiri tajiri mno wakati wao ni maskini it doesn't matter how wealthy they are haijalishi wao ni matajiri kiasi ipi if the word of god is not in them they are wicked and poor na kama neno la mungu halipo ndani yao wao ni waofu na maskini that is the condition of our church today basi hiyo ndo hali ya kanisa letu leo repent for jesus is coming. Basi ziungame dhambi zako maana Yesu anarudi. Shalom. Amani. Praise be to God. Our heavenly Father who lives forever. I thank God because I can feel many people people are crying for repentance. Hey. May the glory go back to God. Hallelujah. I thank God, man of God, God bless you so much for that great word. For the great word in our lives. Many people have seen my sister Nila cry for repentance and cry for God help us and enlighten our eyes. We want to see you again. It's a, a painful message to a lost church you and me not a building man of god is speaking about you and me don't you know that you are the temple of god and whosoever destroys the temple the lord shall destroy praise the lord so we are the temple of jehovah today and i thank god because i'm um, seeing people are being touched my sister christabel i know teased you somewhere saying i'm jumping he, she jumps into that great message of today hallelujah and i know that we are jumping in with the tears and saying god we are coming back to you father wherever we have gone astray we are okay thinking that we are right hallelujah that we have this and that oh my god help me you know my pastor oh god help me help me god that I may not lead astray your people, your children, your sheep. At least I be content. I can see and I can feel people are in tears, crying for the mercies of God. And the man of God have said that God is inviting us. Though he is outside, but he is inviting us. So you have an invitation tonight. Jesus is knocking at the door. Are you going to open? Oh, man of God. Hallelujah. I don't know which question am I going to put on you. Because when I look outside there, many people are crying, oh, my sister Mary, it's like God has forgotten me. I have really labored for this God. And it's like I'm being forgotten. God is not there. Because we are crying for material things. 
No one is seeking for the inner peace of God. Hey, I feel like people need help. We don't need to cry. I don't know. I don't know. Perhaps you will emphasize on that about material things. People are walking all over the world searching for material things, man of God. Are they really helpful to us? Yes, we need prosperity. Oh my God. Yeah, one of the things that I want to say when Jesus looked at the crowd that was following him and he realized that they were not following him because of the word he was preaching but they were following Jesus because of the fish and bread they had eaten then Jesus began preaching now in a serious way and he said if you want to follow me you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood akasema sasa ukitaka kunifuata unapaswa and again he says if you want to follow me you deny yourself and carry your own cross that is a commitment to the disciples and so following Jesus is a commitment you make basi ni kule kujitoa unakojitoa the disciples ask jesus wanafunzi wakamuliza yesu we have left everything basi tumeacha kila kitu everything kila kitu when i read about these disciples naposoma kuhusu hawa wanafunzi they were fishermen walikuwa ni wavua samaki <laughs> they had left the nets walikuwa wameacha pale nyafu sao not so much money in accounts asio pesa nyingi katika benki zao but they had left the nets. They are asking Jesus, what shall we get in return? We have left everything that we have been depending on. That was a serious commitment. These are not people that are following Jesus because of miracles, signs and wonders. They have left the riches and the glory of the world. They want to embrace Jesus. And Jesus was together with them. Na Yesu pamoja na wao. So we have pickers and seekers. Na kuna wale wakuja kunyakuwa na wale wakutafuta. So we are talking about the seekers of the kingdom. Hivyo tunazungumzia kuhusu wale watafutaji wa ufalme. Not the pickers, those who come to church to pick healing pick blessing pick everything and they turn away from god they go and start living as worldly people sio wale wakuja tu kuchukua wanaokucha kanisani kuchukua uponyaji kuchukua baraka kuchukua wanachotaka na baadaye wanageuka wanawacha injili na kuenda paul says the goodness of god must lead us to repentance paul anasema kwamba uwema wa mungu uzuri wa mungu utatuelekeza katika kutubu amen Amen. We are not pickers, but we are seekers of the kingdom. So if we are seekers of the kingdom, the rich, the richness of the kingdom, the wealth of the kingdom belongs to us. Hallelujah. And the first wealth I know in the kingdom is peace. Praise the Lord. Because the man of God has already mentioned about people having a lot of money in, in their accounts, but they lack peace. They commit suicide. They die and leave the money behind. Hallelujah. So we are coming here to seek the face of the Lord. And may the goodness of the Lord tonight lead you unto repentance, as the man of God has said. So I thank God. I thank God, my fellow viewer. I don't know where my comments have really disappeared, but I have seen many people commenting and saying they are really in for this. They are ready to change. 
the word of God comes to change and to shape our lives. So tonight, na mini ya kwamba umepokea, umebarikiwa, na unaenda mbali. Let your mind be renewed. Mawanzo yako, fikra zako zifanywe upia kila wakati. Hatuko hapa kimsa, hatuko hapa ni mekwambea kwamba ili tuko unganike tuombe wote pamoja. Man of God, God bless you so much. I have so many questions to ask but because of time, I will say God bless you because we have also another session of prayer. We want the man of God to pray for us. People have sent their, here their requests. Others need finances. Their finances, those to be unlocked. Health problems. May God intervene tonight. But we have not to come to pick health and to pick money. But we have come to seek the face of the Lord, whom in his stripes we were healed. And remain there as a testimony. Because the testimony of the Lord is sure. Hallelujah. Amen. It makes the symbol Amen. wise. So let us remain there for the testimony of the Lord is sure and is going to save more and more people. Praise the Lord. Amen. Usione kwamba labda katika haya maongezi ambao tunaongea hatupendi kutajirika lakini tupate utajiri katika njia inayofaa njia ya Kristo. Njia ambayo ni kamilifu. Tunapenda tutajirike kabisa katika ulimwengu. Lakini tusiwe watu ambao tunafuata Kristo, mtumishi wa Mungu, somebody giving an offering in exchange of health affairs. You know, uh, one, one of the things that uh, I need to say is about uh, I can help him. is about uh, you cannot buy the gift of God mm. with any money. You can't buy it with dollars. You can't buy it with the riches. Mm. Because it has been given by grace. The grace means we do not deserve, but he has given to us freely. freely. So anybody who is trying to sell, he's trying to mess with the grace of God. For the Bible says, hey. freely you have been given, God freely forgive. give. God and forgive. that is a, not an issue of buying and selling. Those people who are trying to sell the gift of God and sell the, 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 the ministry of God, they are mm. violating the word mm -hmm. of grace. That is why uh, when Philip was preaching the gospel, uh, Bariesu went with money so that he can buy their gift, but they said to hell go mm -hmm. because this is not a gift you can buy by money, but it's by faith we are doing what we are doing. So we need to teach people the truth. The people have to come to the knowledge of awareness that your healing is not a result of bribing God by your money. Oh God. You can't hey. give God hey. your money so that God can heal you. Because God is the author and the owner of money. Mm -hmm. So if God is just somewhere waiting for your money, we have so many people with money, but they are seriously sick. Sure. And they can never receive healing because they have money. Amen. You know, I have said that because I remember that we had like four to five segments about, you talked in length about altars. So somebody called me to ask, how much am I supposed to give to break or to raise an altar? That is why I've asked you if we need to give, you know, that one was like a tem <laughs> att attempt to me because I'm a servant of God. So if I need money, probably I will say this much. But because I follow the word of God, I have to answer rightly according to the word of God. You know, people say, Gideon, I'm sorry to go there, <laughs> but we need to know all these things that we received freely, and freely we give. We are not selling it here in our ministry. We are not selling uh, uh, the gift of healing. Receive it wherever you are, and that is why we want the servant of God to pray for us before we depart from this place. And I thank God that I've been praying with people. 
I've been praying with people. You know, uh, at times one sister told me, Mary, mbona how to me, mbona how to me, mafuta. And then I told her, go and buy Vaseline, bring it. We pray for it. Not just a must of anointing oil. Nunua Vaseline, and I thank God. She bought Vaseline. I don't know if it was Valon. I think it was Vaseline. At home. Mzazi wake likuwa nyumbani. She bought Vaseline, and I prayed for that Vaseline. Siku moja tutaweka kwa mtandao mgu wa mzee vile ulikuwa na vile ambavyo umekuwa sasa through Vaseline. Mungu anatumia vyombo vya kiunabi. Lakini sio ya kwamba sasa vile unanunua Vaseline. I have to, to, to sell that Vaseline kwa sababu nimeona mzee amepona kupitia hiyo Vaseline. Sasa ni nunue Vaseline nyingi ni yeke hapa na niziombe na tuanze kupeana kwa damani ya pesa sita fanya hivyo na mungu wa nisame kabisa. That is what I was trying to, to bring ya kwamba is it preferable for us to give a token or to give a sacrifice which uh, uh, how much? When, when, when somebody has received from Jesus, uh -huh. out of love he can be convinced to bless the ministry, uh -huh. not through being compelled. Katika ule upendo, basi anaweza shawishika kubariki uduma, siyo katika kuskumwa. He can bless the ministry, he can come and do something out of love, out of the conviction of the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. they say, because this ministry has been a blessing yes. to me, let me become a blessing in this way yes. or in that way. Anaweza shawishika tu katika moyo wake kwamba kwa vile uduma huu mekua baraka kwangu, nami wacha nifanyike o baraka katika uduma huu katika namna moja ama nyingine. That is out of love. Na hiyo ni kutokana na ule upendo. No one has tried to convince his mind mm -hmm. now you need to do this since God has done this. No. Apana mtu ameshawishi mawazo yake kwamba sasa unapaswa kufanya hii kwa vile Mungu amefanya hii na wewe fanya hii hapana. That is the real blessing. Na hizo ndizo baraka za kweli. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thank God because of what the man of God have just said. I've seen people giving. That is why we have, we are now live. You can watch or you can pray with us. People have really been giving out of love. Praise the Lord. And I know that you will give out of love. You will not be told to give to compensate your healing. May God bless you as now I allow the man of God because we, if we start the debate, I think we will end up tomorrow seated just here. So we also have other topics that are coming as we march out. The sweet hour of prayer. I don't know if the studio has another topic that will be going on. So because of time, wana tuambia wa yetu imefika mwisho tafadhali nitamruhusu. I'm going to allow the man of God, Pastor Johnston, you will just thank God because of those people who are giving out of love. That is why we are here. And the man of God is going to pray for their needs. Hallelujah. He's going to pray for their needs because we want people to get blessed so that they can also be a blessing to the ministry. First of all, they receive the blessing of God. And out of love, they will also bless the ministry of God. Mana hawata taka hi kazi hifike mwisho. You can bless the man of God, apate mafuta, ya gari ya kwenda kwake, uneza mbariki, akaweze kubarikiwa zaidi na zaidi. Tunataka kuona utukufu wa mungu katika hii studio. Na pia uneza ngarisha studio ya mungu. Ikangaye, uneza kuja na useme ya kwamba, I want to change the face of this studio. It's also a blessing. Sio lazima pesa. Sio lazima pesa. You can just come and say, siku wanasikia sauti vizuri. Si kuona Mary kama ameshika microphone kwa hivyo nataka ni mununulie mic mzuri kuliko ila ambaye likuwa na it's a blessing out of love. Unaona kitu ambacho hatuna, unakuja unasema nataka ni nunue meza, nataka ni badilisha hizo viti mmeka nazo kwa mwaka mzima. This is what I want to do and God is going to bless you mightily. Welcome servant of God, Pastor John Stone. Amen. Baba tunakushukuru tena. Asante kwa wema. Asante kwa ukuu wako. Asante kwa neno lako. Ambalo Bwana liko na uweza wa kushawishi moyo wa mwanadamu. Bwana na katika ule upendo kuna wale wamekuwa nasimama pamoja nasi wanatushika mkono 
wamesimama na mtumishi wako kwa upendo wamekuwa na mbariki Bwana tunakushukuru kwa ajili yao tunaomba kwamba maisha yao Mungu yanakuwa yenye utofauti hawataishi maisha ya kawaida kwa sababu ya upendo huu Mungu utasa hautakuwa sehemu yao katika biashara katika uzao wao katika kila chochote wanachoguza na mikono zao Mungu utasa hautakuwa sehemu katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunakushukuru Bwana wa majeshi maana hela zao hazitatumika katika namna ya uharibifu magonjo hayatakuwa sehemu ya kuharibu Bwana wa majeshi mapato yao katika jina la Yesu Kristo moja wapo ya vitu ambazo umetuaidia ni afya iliyo njema hivyo ninatangaza kwamba hawa wanaobariki huduma huu yes. afya itakuwa sehemu yao katika jina la Yesu Kristo na hapana silaha zozote zitakazoinuka kinyume na maisha yao zitakazo faulu jioni ya leo katika jina la Yesu Kristo Asante maana wewe ni Mungu. Hapana masumbuko, hapana balaa, hapana mikosi katika maisha na katika shughuli zao katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Asante maana wewe ni Mungu. Kwa jina la Yesu tunaomba na hata kuamini. Amen. Father we thank you for this day. Yes. We bless you for who you are and we magnify your name because Lord you are great. Thank you Father for this word. Thank you Lord because of each and every person who has been listening. How I pray that Lord, the spirit of God is going to revive us and you are going to restore us back to your plans again. Thank you my father even for those people who are sick, those people who are trusting God because of finances, who are trusting God because of the doors of the work. Those people that are running businesses, but it seems like there is a problem. Lord, I pray that there will be anointing that is going to be restored upon them, which is going to unlock their doors. It is going to deliver and to set them free. Father, those people that are in hospitals, those people that are seriously sick, Lord, I pray for the divine healing. May you touch them and heal them. Father, we have those people that are struggling with the issue of marriage. Yes. Lord, how I pray that you are releasing the true love mm -hmm. among them. Restore that trust which has been taken away, yes. that your will may prevail. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, even for those people who are feeling so hopeless and they have made a very bad decision. Mm -hmm. Lord, do not let them die, yes. but may you save them wherever they are. Hallelujah so that they can give testimony about what you have done. And Lord, we shall thank you and bless you. Thank you because of this day and because of everything that, Lord, you have taught us and you have revealed them to us. I know it's because of your love. May you be magnified. And we love you, Lord, because of everything you have accomplished through this session. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 So God bless you so much. I can see my sister here. Let me just read this. It's a remarkable comment that my sister, Young Josie, Anajita Young Josie, Asema ya kwamba, we have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We are yet to receive him. We have received Jesus as our Savior. We are yet to receive him as our Lord. So receive Jesus as your Lord and your savior amen? amen not just saving you from sickness and saving you from this and that but let him remain to be your lord hallelujah the land lord the man of god is adding it up the land lord let him own you as his own amen so god bless you remain to be a precious stone that will build up a spiritual house for the Lord, because you are a dwelling place for the Almighty God and His Holy Spirit. Shalom, shalom. I've been your host, Pastor Mary Nyokonyo of River of Life Christian Fellowship International, here at Huruma, at our studios, Nyokonyo Studio. God bless you till we meet again, God willing, next Wednesday. Shalom, shalom. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. 
and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom.